As we've been telling you, and you've felt it, we're in a long stretch of hot weather. Haley is back with us. Uh, she's talking with the Houston Health Department uh, like she does every Monday. Yeah, thanks for, for, for joining me on this because we have been talking about the extreme heat. Rough. And Dr. David Purse is the chief medical officer for the city of Houston. He's joining me now to say exactly what people can do to avoid heat-related illness, which we know is probably going to be a problem this week. Right, Dr. Purse? Oh, absolutely. You know, we go through this every year in Houston and people need to get informed uh, in order to protect themselves. So thanks for doing this segment. So which heat related illnesses actually put people at risk of losing their lives? When does it become really dangerous? Well, there are a couple of different kinds of heat illness. We talk about heat cramps and they're pretty minor. They're really painful. You generally get them in your calf or maybe your arm. They're really painful, but they're not dangerous. You get out of the heat, you get hydrated, stay out of the heat for the rest of the day. Your body's already sending you a signal. But those aren't so bad. Heat exhaustion is a little bit more serious. And it again is what it sounds like. People are outside, they're working. And they just realize they just cannot work as hard as they usually do. You're sweating profusely, you're exhausted. That is a little bit more serious. Again, you need to get out of the heat, get yourself rehydrated, and stay out of the heat for the rest of the day. You're done after that. The dangerous one is heat stroke. Heat, you know, heat exhaustion can go into heat stroke, and sometimes people just go right into heat stroke. And this is completely different. It is when your body's mechanisms to cool itself completely fail, and your body's core temperature just skyrockets, and it happens very quickly. In 10 to 15 minutes, you can get into a life-threatening situation. One of the greatest dangers of it is the first symptom often is confusion. So the person who's experiencing it becomes confused and therefore becomes unable to protect themselves. So it's the people that are around them, family members, coworkers, absolute strangers. When you see somebody out in the heat that's acting strangely, their skin is very often, it's very, it may be red, it may, it'll be hot to touch. They're generally dry, they've stopped sweating. That's the cooling mechanism that has failed. You've got to get that person, a couple of things. number one, get them out of the heat. If you can hydrate them a little bit, that's fine. But if they're too confused and they can't swallow, don't force it down. You'll create another problem. But you have to call 911. This is not a problem that's going to resolve on its own. This requires emergency department care to get that person's body temperature down. Their, their brain is so hot because their core temperature, 106, 107, 108, the brain starts to fail. That's why confusion is one of the first symptoms. This is life threatening. You can wind up with permanent brain damage or you can die from this. So heat stroke is the one that we worry about. And it is on the, you know, on the spectrum of heat illnesses, but you can go right into heat stroke all by yourself. Again, the number one early symptom is confusion with generally hot and dry skin. And Dr. Purse, when we talk about who is at risk for these heat related illnesses, we typically talk about the very young, the older population. You're mentioning people who work outside. Is it true right now, though, that since we haven't had a lot of time to gradually acclimate to these hot, hot temperatures, that pretty much anybody could be at risk right now? Because, you know, typically we would have several 90 degree days before we get to 100 and it feels like, boom, it just hit us really quickly this year. No, you know, you're absolutely right. And, and for those of us who've lived in Houston for, for many years, you know, we, we know we, when the heat starts coming, we know that we need to adjust our, our schedule. Anyone is at risk for it. And this year, again, you know, we've gone into right, right from, you know, the nice spring weather right into this really, really hot weather in the summer. That happens right. from time to time here in Houston. But usually we get a little bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, rolling period, right? But Mother Nature didn't give us that this year. And so we are all at risk. Uh, you really need to pay attention to the, the employers that employ people that work outdoors. They often have to adjust their schedules so that they work a little bit more in the morning, take a longer break in the day, maybe work a little bit later in the evening. Uh, if you haven't already done that, if you're an employer and you haven't already done that, you need to do that. I mean, clearly now is the, is the time. For the rest of us, and I, again, we talk about the, the really young and the really old, for the elder folks who live in homes without air conditioning, what we traditionally see here in Houston is that, that those folks start running into trouble towards the end of the summer when that's, it's a cumulative effect over the entire summer where they live in the home without air conditioning and it catches up with them. But this year with it hitting so, so rapid and so early, again, you know, like you said, you're exactly right. Anyone is at risk for a heat emergency this year because we got such high heat so early in the year and we didn't get a chance to acclimatize to it. And then the other group that we were buying, and I was one of these folks 30 years ago, if you've moved to Houston, 
you don't know heat until you've lived in Houston for <laughs> several years. It took me a couple of years to get adjusted to it. Yeah. It wasn't just a bad deal for me the first year. It took me three or four years before my body acclimatized to it. Yeah, and as people are getting older, too, they forget that, you know, your body becomes more sensitive to it as you get older. So always a good reminder. Dr. Purse, we thank you for getting up early and joining us live. We had the uh, cooling centers up on the screen while you were talking, too. And, of course, we will clip this on our website, click to Houston.com, so more people People can get access to this information. Thank you so much, Dr. Purse, Chief Medical Officer for the City of Houston's Health Department.